Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Dr. Paul. Once again, thank you for taking your time this evening to visit our channel and uh, watch this video on dilated cardiomyopathy. As usual, we encourage you to visit our website at www.usmlevideos.net. That is www.usmlevideos.net. Tonight, I want to talk a few minutes about dilated cardiomyopathy. As you can tell from the name itself, this is uh, a disease of cardiac muscle. The myocardium is dilated. So that is the basic problem. So from the name itself, you can say one thing. The, there is dilatation of ventricle. And also there is a systolic dysfunction. So those, those are the two most important points you need to remember when you think about dilated cardiomyopathy. The ventricle is enlarged and also there is systolic dysfunction. Now let us see what are the basic causes for this problem. You remember those three main types of uh, myopathy, cardiomyopathy, the dilated cardiomyopathy, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, and restrictive cardiomyopathy. We will talk about the other two some other time, but when we think about uh, dilated cardiomyopathy, we should always think about alcohol. Chronic alcohol abuse is one of the most common causes of dilated cardiomyopathy. And recently, they have included another entity, Takosubo cardiomyopathy. This is transient cardiomyopathy due to catecholamine release. That is Takosubo cardiomyopathy. Now, many other problems also can cause dilated cardiomyopathy. You see, this is a disease of myocardium. It is not associated with other cardiac pathologies like coronary artery disease or uh, ventricular dysfunction or uh, uh, myocardial infarction or valvular heart disease. Those are not associated with dilated cardiomyopathy because this is basically a disease of myocardium. Now let us talk about uh, the most frequent causes. As I said, alcohol, myocarditis, and uh, some drugs like doxorubicin, endocrinopathies, they cause dilated cardiomyopathy. Hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is mostly hereditary, whereas restrictive cardiomyopathy is, uh, uh, is most commonly due to infiltrative disorders like amyl amyloidosis or sarcoidosis or hemochromatosis or diabetes. But let us, uh, stick, let us uh, confine ourselves to dilated cardiomyopathy today. What are the most common symptoms? You can say actually from the problem itself. You see left ventricle enlarged and uh, blood is being uh, accumulated in left ventricle and that creates a back pressure through the mitral valve into the left atrium and left atrium creates back pressure on the pulmonary vein back into the lungs. So there is pulmonary congestion being developed and that pulmonary congestion causes dyspnea in these patients. That's why the most common symptom in dilated cardiomyopathy is dyspnea because of the pulmonary congestion. You can also say what happens when there is pulmonary congestion. On physical examination, you will hear rails in the lungs because of this increased blood pressure. And also there is enormous increase in the heart's activity that causes the S3, the third heart, uh, third heart sound. And also because of the ballooning of the left ventricle, the conduction system does not work well. That's why many of these patients might end up in ventricular arrhythmias. In physical examination, there will be cardiomegaly, S3, and uh, pulmonary congestion, there will be rails, and uh, that pulmonary congestion also puts more pressure on the right-sided heart. So there will be increased pressure on the right ventricle as it tries to pump blood into the lungs. And uh, that might cause actually tricuspid regurgitation because of the blood that has been forced into the right atrium from the right ventricle.
and that forced blood in the right atrium can pump into the jugular veins that causes increased jugular pressure. So most of the time you can actually deduce these uh, findings you can expect on physical examination and the symptoms these patients might have just by thinking about the cardiac anatomy. And if you take a chest, uh, radi uh, chest radiograph, you will see enlarged heart pulmonary congestion. If you do an echocardiogram, you will see again a balloon, ballooned, an, a, an increased, an enlarged ventricle left ventricle and uh, and the dysfunction is also very very evident so dilated cardiomyopathies they cause congestive heart failure and uh, dyspnea is the most common symptom left ventricular dilation and systolic dysfunction are essential for diagnosis and uh, chronic alcohol abuse is one of the most common things you come across now let us think about symptoms and signs in more detail. I said dyspnea and rails and uh, elevated jugular venous pressure and cardiomegaly, S3 gallop rhythm. And uh, I also told about uh, how the increase of the blood within the left ventricle causes more force on the mitral valve and uh, mitral regurgitation can develop. And also Again, on the right side, it also causes tricuspid regurgitation and peripheral edema and ascites. So, th so those are the most important things. ECG might so sinus tachycardia because the heart's activity has increased in this problem. Though the left ventricle dilated, it does not mean the muscular activity increased. There is actually thinning of the myocardium. So, because of the thinning of the myocardium, uh, Frank Starling mechanism does not work. You remember Frank Starling mechanism, which says that if you put more pressure over the heart, it pumps blood more rigorously, more strenuously. But you see, Frank Starling mechanism fails in left ventricular dilatation because this is not the increase in the thickness of the myocardium. It just thinning of the myocardium. So these patients most commonly end up in uh, cardiomegaly and uh, diagnostic studies you should order echocardiogram, exercise stress test in order to diagnose coronary artery disease and if you suspect uh, things like sarcoidosis, hemochromatosis or amyloidosis, cardiac MRI is very useful and if you suspect hemochromatosis you can also uh, order serum ferritin levels and in order to uh, quantify congestive heart failure you can also order BNP level. Now treatment. AC inhibitors you are basically treating heart failure. What are the most common cause uh, most common drugs we use in heart failure? AC inhibitors and beta blockers, diuretics and aldosterone antagonists. Somehow calcium channel blockers, you should avoid them. You can also restrict sodium because that puts more pressure on the heart and uh, biventricular pacing, implantable defibrillator and uh, alcohol should be discontinued. Now you see as uh, left ventricle becomes enlarged, there is pooling of the blood on the left sided heart and ultimately this can affect left atrium and patient can develop atrial fibrillation and atrial fibrillation as you know is a, a potential danger to to synthesize the emboli in the within the blood that's why these patients should also be started on anticoagulation whenever they have atrial fibrillation you should start them on anticoagulation with warfarin and you should check their protime and INR regularly. So that is uh, most commonly about uh, dilated cardiomyopathy. As usual, visit our website at www.usmlevideos.net and if you have any questions, post them and we would like to hear from you. Whenever you have some time, write a note to us and uh, your emails will be always uh, thanked and uh, that's it for tonight. Thank you very much.